Yes. <laughs> well, the subject of my speech, as you already heard, is how to keep your mind sharp. And for those who don't have any sharp mind anymore, how to make your mind sharp again, maybe. <laughs> Some might ask, why should I have a sharp mind? I am content to the mind I have now, because with the sharp, my sharp mind you see too much. And maybe it's much better not to see so much of the world when the world is getting worse and worse. Okay, but if for the other people who still want to sharpen your mind, so I will talk about this. Some might ask, why is this guy giving this speech? What is he doing to keep his mind sharp? In terms of numbers, I am now 84 years old. I say in terms of numbers, but you know the most important thing is uh, how you feel and what you can do at this age. So what I'm doing, quite a lot. First of all, I'm giving the two groups of yoga a week. So that makes up about 10 hours of yoga teaching every week. Then I work at home another couple of hours. I play tennis, pick a ball, and uh, uh, I do some dancing. So that's for the body. So keeping the body uh, in a good shape, and especially keep the body flexible. Because the body is the basis for your mind. A stiff body, even if you don't believe it, makes your mind stiffer and stiffer. So that's what I'm doing for keeping your body sharp. The second thing is what I'm doing for the mind. I am writing and I am making a lot of videos in YouTube about all kinds of subjects, from poetry to uh, theater, from philosophy <laughs> to meditation. And I uh, do these uh, videos in three languages. So uh, that keeps my mind sharp, because the philosophers, so the philosophers I'm producing, acting, not just talking about Nietzsche, acting Nietzsche. Because as an actor, I don't like to talk about, I, I want to feed it. So that's for the mind. And the third thing is, it's a combination of body and mind, acting. Because uh, when you act, you need some memory to memorize uh, the text. And I have a double difficulty because I have to memorize the text and also in Spanish, though I have to learn it uh, twice. And acting is being totally in the present moment. And I have to trust my memory, because uh, I play uh, mostly monologues lately. Because I live in Copacabana, I don't have any theatre group anymore, so I'm acting monologues. And in a monologue, you are alone, alone on the stage, and I need my memory. So, yoga, writing, producing videos, and on the other hand, combining it by acting. So that's what I'm doing at my age. I have no problem with moving and so. And once a year, I'm still dancing badly in, uh, in Cocotepec and the nut 
Nutknecht. Nutknecht. Yeah. The uh, the mark. So that's how I get my mind sharp. Now let's talk about three basic elements: body, breathing, and the mind. The working your body is very important because the body is always in the here and now. You cannot transport your body somewhere else and leave part of the body here. The body is always in the here and now. And it is a basis for the mind. The mind is seldom completely in the here and now. So we use the body, the presence of the body, as an anchor to tie the mind in the present moment, in the here and now. We will talk about this later when we talk about the mind. So, working the body. Today we have so many possibilities. Uh, I don't talk uh, about yoga, because many people say yoga is too complicated for me. I cannot sit anymore on the floor. No problem. You have heard about chair yoga. But there are classes here about chair yoga. So everybody can do chair yoga. So you, you sit in your chair, you even can watch the television and not seem lost when you lose two or three scenes. And the most important thing is to keep your spine flexible. Because when the spine is getting stiffer and it's getting stiffer if you don't do anything, so it affects the mind. The mind becomes uh, not flexible anymore. You cannot react. Uh, spontaneously. So we do, do some simple exercises like bending forward and bending backward, bending forward and bending backward and uh, twisting and twisting. I cannot give uh, a whole class here. But uh, take a chair yoga. And even it's not necessary to take a class three times a week. That's nearly useless. There is what I call the yoga of five minutes. Okay, in the morning you do some exercises uh, against the wall, wall exercises and uh, in the bathroom, five minutes. Then you get your breakfast and after two or three uh, hours, you do some exercises, you sit there and you do some exercises, some exercise. The yoga of five minutes spread over the whole day. And in the evening, when you go to bed, the body is not <laughs> stiff and you cannot sleep because the body is so stiff. You, you will reach the evening with the body with less tension because the during the, any activities during the day, the tension uh, uh, accumulates. And if you get not rid of the tension of this day, you take it away to the next day, in the next day, in the next year, and then you need to stick it with the more practice. It's just laziness. Because today, we have so many possibilities, even YouTube, full of videos, simple videos about chair yoga. And then five minutes and you work your body. And also very important, check your uh, body posture. You can do it, check it against uh, the wall. Because there are people, they cannot do this exercise anymore because of the hunchback. So you can check your posture if you're already like this. Okay, that's about the body as a basis for the mind.
we do one little exercise because there is not no much space for bigger movements. What you always can do is the old sewing machine of grandmother. Grandmother sewing machine. So you not if you want you do it if you don't want it. no no problem don't do it. So lift your heels, lift your toes, lift your heels, lift your toes, and that stimulates the circulation, especially when you sit for a long time in airplanes. So you do this, and it's like walking. And you can do it in the restaurant when you wait for your food and it doesn't come, so you do something for your body. And uh, the <coughs> other thing is to be really here. So we lift one hip and put it down. We lift the other hip and put it down. So up and down. And up and down. And we tremble on the floor. Now we are here. So we brought the, the mind back. We are really bodily here, physically. And that is very important. There are recommendations that you say it's good to walk. Yeah, it's good to walk. But how? There are people, they have uh, their earphones, they're walking with the earphones. So, but as an exercise, the Buddhists have slow walking. So when you walk even on the Malikon, you are really conscious what the feet are doing. And you can use it as a concentration exercise. Mentally, you say, right, left, right, left, right, left. And probably the mind already wanders away. So it will bring the mind back. Right, left, right, left. We use daily activities. You don't have to go to a retreat and sit for hours and hours and you become more stupid and more stupid. No, <laughs> daily life. That's the way. Second, breathing. Obviously, when the body is stiff, especially the thorax, breathing becomes shorter. <laughs> you walk over the steps, <laughs> out of breath. And a short breathing agitates the mind. So what we have to check is our breathing, especially you do some exercises to open your, uh, your thorax, and that makes breathing uh, easier and profound. A long and calm breath comes down the mind. With an agitated mind, you cannot see clearly. And when you don't see clearly, you cannot memorize things clearly. So <coughs> we, we do again a little exercise. Lift your right hand and let's try first. Count six. Like one, two, three, four, five, six for the innovation. Hold the breath. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Other arm. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. Do it by yourself. So don't follow me, don't follow the group. Just check. If you can count to six, or you feel your lungs already full, that means lung capacity is not very good. And check it, hold a little pause without air. Okay, what we do in yoga class is we walk and do the arm exercise. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, one, two. So the whole body is involved. With this, your breathing will be longer and you don't have to breathe so frequently. Set mind. The question is, what is a sharp mind? Obviously, a sharp mind is a concentrated mind. And the mind which is not sharp is a distracted mind. It's the normal mind of 90.9% .9 of the people. A mind which you have no control over. The mind is thinking you, but you are not thinking your thoughts. One saw that the other game doesn't you la 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 la. And I was a teacher for many years of German. And German is not so uh, an easy language. And I could see how the capacity, the learning capacity is going down, 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 down. <laughs> the people have more problems with learning now. Why? Because so much bombardment, no more much impression, 150 channels and the constant distraction of the cell phone. The mind cannot digest all this. Okay. A concentrated mind it's a sharp mind. And how to concentrate the mind. You have heard that because it's now a big fashion, mindfulness. It's an old thing from the Buddhists, 200, 500, 2,000, 500 years old, but the Westerners they are just discovering now. <laughs> and what is in mindfulness? Being with the mind and what you are doing at this moment. When you are walking, as I said before, don't use uh, a, a music because the mind is in the music and the body is there. When you are walking, you walk. When you are conscious about what the feet are doing, what I explained before. So mindfulness is keeping the mind in the present moment and the sentence uh, or the phrase what they are using the task at hand what is the task at hand in the morning you prepare your uh, morning coffee that's your task and what should you do the mind should be what the hand are doing uh, and then most people, they prepare your coffee and then they start drinking and the mind is spacing out, spacing out. Why are you preparing your coffee? The mind is not here. It, it's not enjoying the coffee. You probably know about the Japanese tea ceremony. Slow. And they savor the tea in a very quiet environment. It's like a ceremony, but the Americans invented 
fast food. Chuck, 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 fast food, fast food. Time is money, fast food, fast food. Imagine the person who invented the stupid sentence, time is money, must he be a completely idiot. Time is life. It's not money. Time is life. And if you have a lot of money, but little time, and that's is coming nearer, all your big money doesn't, doesn't buy you any more time. Time is life. And as I see, we are, what say in Mexico, uh, third, uh, third, uh, yeah, the, the, the generation. Huh? We are all older and life is getting shorter. So what we should do is enjoy the last years of our life and how intensely with sharp mind being aware, enjoying each moment consciously. So there comes the second element. First mindfulness and their memory. You both go together. If you're doing something and the mind is not here and you want to remember what you did, forget it. <laughs> the impression is so weak that you cannot remember. So the more you are present, the more you are concentrated on what you are doing, the better will be the memory and you will record everything on clarity. The big problem now in school is the kids, and I was given classes, and during the class the kids were watching the cell phone under the table. <laughs> Do you think they learned something? No. Besides, they are not, not even interested anymore to learn. Because they are children of rich people, why should they learn? They have already the money of the, of the parents. So, both things together. Attention and memory. And how can we train our memory? Every simple exercise is at night you sit in your best chair don't lay down because otherwise you will sleep <laughs> in your best chair and remember the day you just lived through one way is starting in the morning and there is a simple technique Location and time. You ask yourself, at nine o'clock, where was I? Uh -huh. I was in the kitchen. So it's kitchen and the time. And what did I do? Okay, I vaguely remember I did my, did my breakfast uh, and can I remember what I ate? If it's not the same stuff you eat every day, well, it's easy to remember, but if you change sometimes, what did I eat? And then you can even remember the taste of what you ate. That is already an advanced stage of uh, memorization. And then you see a whole day, because that's what our life is. Day after day after day. If you cannot remember in the evening what you did in the morning, why did you live? Because it passes like one day, another day, another day, and then life is over. And you hardly were aware of that you have lived. So that's one way. And the another way is you are more uh, like an exercise. Probably you see more videos 
from movies. Because what else should you do with your life? <laughs> I cannot stand myself. <laughs> so I need always distractions, distractions, one movie after the other. I said, no, okay, let's say you see a movie. See, let's say, a scene. Most people have a CD or you can watch a movie in uh, YouTube so you can uh, uh, go back. You see a scene, stop, and visualize the scene. The actors and the background where the scene is uh, taking place and what they are talking about. And so you make a, a copy, a mental copy of the movie, <coughs> and then you go back, watch the scene again, and you compare your mental movie with the real movie. There you can see how much you can remember. People who are still uh, reading, there are not many people anymore, but let's say some people are reading. <laughs> you read the page, close the book, and imagine what you have read. Can you remember one page? And then you open again at a compare what you remembered and what's really on the page. Involved in this is the capacity of visualization. If you have a vivid fantasy and you read, it says the page with uh, black points on it, uh, you, you transform it into your mental movie. So uh, a strong uh, imagination is the best thing for remembering. Because then, you just look at the pen mental picture and you describe it like this. And that's easy. Describing a, a picture which you see, obviously with your mental eye, it's not so difficult. So, these are some exercises. The uh, most recommended is Remember your day. And another thing, which I consider craziness. Look at the people when they are traveling. Picture, 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 picture. And then they go home and they check, 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 check. I don't take any pictures. Because when you are in a place, and you're much more concerned about taking picture and the picture and picture. You're not really there. You're more concerned about the good picture. When you're in a place and it's a beautiful place, enjoy it. Take it in with all your five senses. In the photo, what is always excluded is the smell. I remember I have seen beautiful pictures of India. And when I went to India, what was the most, uh, the strongest impression? Smell. Because uh, lately it's changed, but uh, let's say in Bombay people are peeing in public and you pass by and the heat and the smell, smell. You cannot uh, take a picture of a smell. <laughs> so being in the place, enjoy it. <laughs> well, even the smell. <laughs> and then, when you are back home, you don't need the picture. <clears throat> you transport yourself again in the place, and believe me, Everything is inside. It's only being present and all the sensations are coming up again. For example, probably some people of you can remember more clearly your childhood. Even 
I can go in, can go back to my childhood and then and feel the structure of a wood of a door. It's all inside. So when you go traveling, enjoy it. Sit down, open your senses and be there and soak it up. Okay. That still sounds nice, but now I come to a very uh, to a point which many people don't like. Critical thinking. <laughs> I know that people are you know, critical you think thinking everything is uh, fine, you are fine, I am fine, you have we have tolerated, we have to tolerate everything, everything is fine. Okay. You stay like this. But with a sharp mind, you can't sue. In Buddhism, they use the sword of wisdom. The sword of wisdom cuts through all the illusion, delusion, self uh, lies, and whatever, cuts through. And that means you go deep. It's really sad how superficial most of the people today are. Superficial, what is called. The, the light generation. The young people, ah, oh, fine, fine, everything should be fine, otherwise I will not do it, it should be fine, 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 superficial. <laughs> and then you have the sort, the critical thinking, and you cut through, and you see what's done. If you stay in a, super, in a superficial level, you will never go down. You will never see it. And then critical thinking needs a sharp mind. Critical thinking is not just criticizing, criticizing. No. You need, you, you have to have knowledge. You have to have a white culture. So you don't criticize. That's what criticize it. In my case, I wrote books about Christianity, for just taking an example. And I have many videos about Christianity, satirical videos. So I know more about Christianity than most of the Christians. And I say I have a right to criticize because I know and you don't know. Okay, last thing, the self-image. Everybody has an image about himself. And uh, one sentence is very important. There can be a young mind <coughs> in an old body. And there can be an old mind in a young body which is more frequently. <laughs> there are people at about 50, they are already old, mentally old. They are in a mental set which doesn't move anything. They are fixed. And there are physical old people. They are full of curiosity. They want to go learning new things. They are young in mind. So, the numbers of your age, that's the reason why I said I, uh, uh, according to the numbers, I'm 84. But my mental image, I feel much younger because I can do nearly all the things which I did when I was 20. Yoga exercise, no problem. Same exercises I did when I was 20, 20, I can do at 84, no problem. So. Check your mental image. You can change it, but you have to do something. Change start with the body. How do you feel your body? If you are dragging your legs like this, it's very difficult to feel young. So you cha 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 cha. That's what we're doing in the yoga class. Chopping, chopping, feel again like a child. Light, light, light. And check your 
world view. Don't take any world view from the television or from a political party. Be free. And I have to say also, check your religious belief. Uh, you can be religious, but don't, know, don't be a follower of an established religion. These are just dead rituals. So, the good thing is, we can change. We are always changing, physically, mentally changing. And say, so, I can change myself. I can, uh, no need to leave it to nature. And the, 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 the biological clock is running and running, and I have to follow this. No, I said, I let this uh, clock run. I take my life in my hand and I change myself according to what I want to be. Just to finish with a little story. There was a lady, she was obese like this. And she wanted to uh, slim down. And it was very difficult because she always went on eating and eating. So what did she do? From a magazine, she cut out a nice girl, a slender girl. Cut off the head <laughs> and put a photo of her head. And then she put this slender girl on the refrigerator. And every time when she went to the refrigerator, she saw herself in this slender body. And she stepped back. And according to this, she lost weight. If she, if she reached the slender girl, I don't know. But you see, because mentally, she said, I will be like this slender girl and it helped. <laughs> yeah, okay, here yeah. Well, thank you very much, Bernard. We have time for questions, so if you have a question, raise your hand. I will walk slowly. <laughs> I really enjoyed that talk, partially because my birthday today, I'm 80 years old. <laughs> and it's like it's, I'm still dancing. Oh, I didn't know you were there. I find you really like The question I've got is how do we remember people's names? Well, my memory's good, but when it comes to people's names, I just perish. People's names. People's names. Remember people's names. Okay, for example, the remembering uh, names. Uh, what I am sometimes doing, for example, uh, the boy who is working here with the Louis. Folds or so. He said his name was Isaias. It's not a very common name. What I'm doing? Oh, Isaias. In German, it's Isaias. It's from the Bible. So I relate it with something which is much easier to remember the whole context. Just more easier than just one name. And they had uh, another woman, she was, uh, uh, her name was Marilyn. Oh, uh, uh, the actress, Marilyn. So uh, I remember uh, uh, re relating people. Marilyn Monroe, yeah. Any other questions? My question is, uh, Mother Nature is making us 
come to our end of our life and so it's working on us and we are developing osteoarthritis or a variety of medical issues. Our body is aging whether you like it or not. I agree that you can stem it or slow it down through exercise, lifestyle and other things. But essentially we are fighting Mother Nature and that's a good thing to do. But uh, how do you uh, reverse it or can you really reverse it? No. So what was exactly the question? <laughs> Well, nature is aging us whether we like it or not. Ah, yes. Yeah. But <laughs> there are people, they, because of uh, circumstances, genes or whatever, they always, they're always sick. It hurts here, it hurts here, it hurts here. And there's a possibility uh, me meditation. For example, the story of Buddha, when he was uh, nearly 80 years old, he was an old man when he had problems to walk, because at that time being 80 years old was nearly impossible. The Indian, they were dead, dead at 40. So, Buddha said, when I walk, I feel the body like an old car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I sit down in meditation, I don't feel the body. So you separate from the body. And I know that from meditators who had a lot of problem with the body, through relaxation and separation from the body, you forget the body temporarily and you dedicate yourself to the mind and you don't feel all your body problems. Other questions? Right. No? So? Okay. Everything questions? Was... Okay. Yeah. Yeah.